But before each of those sets, I wanted to bring in a few of my friends to talk about the local jazz scene. And here they are, really some of the best musicians in Pittsburgh or just anywhere in the country. Danny Kahn, trumpet, flugelhorn, Don Alico, saxophone, flute, Roger Ryan back there on the drums, uh, Dave LaRocca on the bass, and Brother Bobby on the drums, Bobby Negri. You know, I've been looking for an opportunity to get you guys out here, and we've been looking for a show that had to do with jazz, and tonight was just the perfect vehicle because we had the Dizzy Gillespie documentary and then followed by the, uh, the Fathead Newman. But maybe to get some conversation going, I found this the other day in one of my fake books, and uh, it's a tune that Miles Davis wrote. Uh, Bobby, give me a F minor 7. Listen to these words. It began as an experiment, a little new, but with the time cleverly spent, it woke up musical minds, and boy, it sure made a dent. And so we know that bebop lives. Dizzy Bird and Miles, they did it their way. Swing time people didn't figure it could stay. But they split, wouldn't you know, because the time was passe, and so they know that bebop lives. Well, we know that bebop lives, right? Because we sort of all lived through it in one way or another. Um, Danny, when do, when do you first recall, you know, hearing what became known as bebop? What was your first introduction to it? Early, early 40s. And I, I was still in, in high school, and, and somebody called me up. I think uh, Jack uh, Rand, Buzzy Rand, they, they lived in Homewood. Yeah. I got on a trolley. He said, you got to hear this guy. And I went out to uh, Homewood, got on a trolley, and, and, and went in the house, and he played, uh, I think it was Groove and I. <laughs> one of those old yeah. Charlie Parker things, and I just thought, wow. How many, how many heard Groove and High as their first introduction to Bebop? I know Bobby and I did. Don, what was your, what was your first tune that you heard? The first tune I recall was uh, Hey Baba Rebop, and then it was Salt Peanuts. Salt, pe two. Salt Peanuts might have been the very first one that, I, that I, Dizzy did, right? I think because it had the, the, uh, the Bebop connotation in the sound. Exactly. I was just going to say, Bob, hit a B-flat note. It went ba ba da ba 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 da ba da ba be ba ba be ba, and that little simple thing started a whole mess. Rod, do you remember that one? Well, I'll tell you, I, uh, that one I do recall, but I think there might be one earlier than that that might reflect that style of bebop, and it's an old tune called Josephine. Bob, do you have a mic that for Roger? Almost a bebop chorus. Do you remember Josephine? Wait, I want to get a mic over to you, Roger? Hang on. There you go. Uh, during that period, there was a tune that uh, was actually earlier. It was a tune called Josephine, which actually, if you think about it, is almost a bebop chart. You mean the old song, Josephine? Do you remember, do you remember that there tune? There was a girl, I could love, I could love my Josephine. Yeah, that listen, one? listen to that line. That line is bebop. That whole tune is a bebop chart. Yeah, you know. yeah, it really is. But I must tell you, the first time that I heard bebop was an int is a rather interesting experience. I was uh, I was a young guy, and there was a tune. There was a, a, a radio show on WPGH called uh, Stars of Tomorrow, huh? and I had a polka band on there, more or less in those days. And some of these guys walked in, and Danny Kahn doesn't remember this, but he was one of them. Sonny Dallas was another, and God knows who else was on that band. But the first time I heard bebop was a tune that they played called September in the Rain. If you remember that tune. But they yeah. showed up, they looked like ghosts, actually. They came in in that whole bebop genre, you know. And yeah. it just astonished us, and it astonished yeah. me. My brother and I both heard it. Bob, you recall, somebody called us on the telephone, huh? Yeah, an old saxophone player by the name of Bill McCrell. Was, was Chef Bill's orchestra with you? Yeah, he was a pal of mine. And, and what did he play for us? He played Groovin' High. Played Groovin' High. That's the first time I ever heard. David, back there on the bass, David, you're... You're the young one of the crowd, but, but you had some uncles who were very much involved in this movement. Yeah, Bob, I did. Do you, uh, do you recall getting it from them, your Uncle Frank Lamarck? Sure, and your uncle, uh, sure I did. I was Luke? about nine years old, maybe, and we used to sit in the house, and they used to play these lines for me. Now's the time, I think, was the first one I heard. Uh, yeah, we might be playing that a little later yeah, on today. Was, and I said, boy, what's that? You know, I didn't know what that was, but I sure found out in a hurry what it was. It was <laughs> great music. Yeah. It caught me. 
You know, I was a little hesitant about doing that lyric, but I like what it said. You know, the trouble with, with lyrics, I think that was one of the things that, that hurt bebop more than anything. I mean, that oobop shabam and that ulya coo and that hey baba rebob stuff, I think. Uh, Danny, you were saying there were some other things that were kind of against it, though, too. Well, there was like their horn rim glasses people didn't seem to like them. Dizzy uh, in, in, was actually uh, one of the... Uh, he, he was the owner of those. He, he, I think he was the first one uh, yeah. to, to wear them extensively, and they, and they resented that, and they resented his goatee, and they resented trumpet, uh, carry a trumpet in a bag, you know, and they, yeah. every little thing. They Stick around, guys, because we're going to play some bebop in the next break, okay? All right. Dizzy Gillespie is up next. The gig we're about to see took place last July at Monmouth Battlefield State Park in Freehold, New Jersey. Over 3,000 fans braved 95 degree heat to listen to the living legend of bebop. By the way, this was the only stateside stop on Dizzy Gillespie's international tour last year, so we're fortunate to have this on tape. John Burke's Gillespie is regarded as one of the founding fathers of the modern jazz era. He helped lead us from the swing era to bebop. Dizzy led both big bands and small combos and is considered one of the greatest improvisers ever on the trumpet. If jazz musicians are known by the company they keep, then consider who Dizzy Gillespie has played with. Cab Calloway, Charlie Parker, Max Roach, Sonny Rollins, Stan Getz, Ella Fitzgerald, Lionel Hampton, Benny Carter, and the list goes on. Dizzy has slowed down a bit in the past few years. Heck, he's been playing over five decades. But as you're about to see, even a legend in the twilight of his career can still play a mean set. Dizzy's band includes Ed Cherry on guitar, Sam Rivers on sax, John Lee on electric bass, Ignacio Baroa on drums. Here's Mr. Bebop himself, Dizzy Gillespie, courtesy of New Jersey Jazz. And stay with us because we'll be playing in the studio afterwards. You're watching WQEX, Channel 16 in Pittsburgh. Welcome back from New Jersey Jazz. I'm Joe Negri, and we're in the middle of a jazz night to remember. If you've been watching Dizzy Gillespie, you may have the urge to run out tomorrow and buy one or two of his recordings. Well, He's made dozens over the years, some good, some great, some out of print. Here are a few five-star recommendations courtesy of the Rolling Stone record guide. First, there's The King of Bop, recorded with Charlie Parker and Miles Davis. Look for it on the Archive Folk label. Then, there's an electrifying evening with the Dizzy Gillespie Quintet on the Verve label. Another album... Joe Pass, Ray Brown, and Mickey Roker join Diz to make the Big Four. There's also Bayana, a two-record set featuring Dizzy's trumpet set against a two-guitar rhythm section. Both those records are on the Pablo label. Those are just a few of his best, though Dizzy certainly has given us many, many great recordings. Meanwhile, David Fathead Newman will be along for his set. But right now, let's return to our in-house band. Well, you know, I, it's, it's hard to, uh, to uh, differentiate between who was the most important, Diz or, or Parker, in this movement. I mean, I guess they both came from different directions, but I read a little piece the other day that when Dizzy heard Parker on a recording or something, he immediately wanted to seek him out and was very instrumental and getting Parker to join uh, um, Billy Eckstein's band, which started it. Uh, this bebop thing, Danny, uh, as far as the trumpet, what did, what did Diz do that changed, that say, from the era that preceded, say, from, say from Roy Eldridge? Well, Roy Eldridge, and uh, I think Diz, uh, well, you, you cannot talk about trumpet players without first mentioning uh, Louis Armstrong, and I'm sure he uh, influenced Diz a lot. And uh, Roy Eldridge was one of the first uh, person to sort of combine 
both schools and with emotion and, and expression, and he was able to play. Yeah, he did play with a lot of soul. Yeah, and, and a lot of his licks, a lot of his ideas are. Could could you play something like Roy might have played? It? All right. Um, this is uh, one of Roy's licks he used to play uh, uh, occasionally in different different tunes for the. Yeah, along yeah. And now you'll hear Dizzy uh, uh, play uh, uh, a lot like that on, a, on, on even the confirmation and, well, and different things. Yeah, was there much of a difference between Roy's sound and Dizzy's sound? Did Dizzy do something different as far as uh, sounds? To basically not. Roy, in them days, they, they, uh, they played uh, with a little bigger uh, mod piece. You know, they get a little fat sound and everything. And Dizzy, for his work... Uh, he had a mouthpiece that was able to uh, fly around all over the horn range he, and he, with ease. He did have phenomenal technique. The first guy to really put it on automatic. <laughs> in other words, he, he's playing in uh, two or three different times at the same time and uh, flying all yeah. over the horn. We only have a couple of minutes left in the break, and I wanted to ask Roger, the drum, the drum situation changed considerably, didn't it, Roger? Well, yeah, I think there's a mic minute. down there, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, it changed quite a bit, actually. There were... Uh, it's amazing, you know, it took us 200 years to put a, uh, somebody on the moon, and uh, and it takes us at least 20 years to make a movement in the rhythm section. It's yeah. incredible. But uh, one what of the was early... It? What was it? Well, suppose we give you a little rhythm, and you show us, like, a swing a swing drummer's uh, conception of... Uh, okay, I should rhythm. mention that an awful lot of that uh, music had to do with the, the importance of a sox cymbal, or hi-hat, which they called in those days. And that hi-hat has changed around quite a bit over the years. And uh, the initial thing was pretty much straight ahead. I should tell you, I'll show you right now. Okay. Now, believe it or not, getting into the swing era, it took really maybe 10, 15 years for the drummer to make some variable on that, and the variable would have been something like this. It's incredible, yeah. just a little movement like that. Yeah. It frees the music up considerably. Okay. Yeah. Well, bebop was pretty controversial and pretty revolutionary, but the blues stayed. The blues has always been with us. And bebop musicians use the blues as a vehicle, just like it always had been done. So let's let's do some blues. Maybe we'll put a couple of them together. And uh, if you bebop fans out there, see if you can recognize some of these tunes. We're going to put a couple of blues together. One, two, one, two, three, and four. <laughs>
The blues. Certainly um, a style that was kept intact with the bebop movement. Um, something that was added uh, was uh, rhythm changes. And I think I had to tell them what rhythm changes are. People confuse rhythm changes with uh, the fact that it's um, uh, just the rhythm of the song. Actually, the rhythm changes came about uh, from the George Gershwin song, I Got Rhythm, which is... So, in the bebop movement, those chord changes were taken and original songs were built to them, and therefore the name Rhythm Changes. We're going to do some night right now. Let's do, uh, well, at least do one. This is one that was written by Charlie Parker, who was... Um, Dizzy's counterpart, and it's called Anthropology, or the study of ma man. Man. <laughs> Here we go. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four.
All right, right now we're heading back to Freehold, New Jersey to see David Fathead Newman and his quintet. The story goes that Newman, the only child of an upper-class Dallas family, got the nickname Fathead from a high school music teacher after goofing up on a lesson. Well, who knows? The music teacher is probably selling used cars in Fort Worth. Meanwhile, Newman's done pretty well for himself. He was discovered by Ray Charles in the late 1950s. You'd never know it by the title of his debut album, Ray Charles Introduces Fathead Newman. David's also worked with Herbie Mann and for years was a regular on the Saturday Night Live band. In this half-hour set, Newman is joined by Walter Bishop Jr. on piano, David Williams on bass, Eddie Gladden on drums, and Steve Nelson on vibes. They'll perform Ain't Misbehavin', Willow Weep For Me, and Fathead's trademark song, Hard Times. Our in-house band will return afterwards. Now, here's David Fathead Newman. We're back in the QEX studio on an in-performance jazz night. I'm Joe Negri, and glad you could join us. We've just taken in some New Jersey jazz. Now we're going to wind up the evening with a little more Pittsburgh jazz. I really want to thank you guys for joining us tonight. You know, Pittsburgh has always been very, very vital. Uh, it was very vital in the bebop, in the bebop development itself. Uh, what do you think is happening now as far as music? You think bebop is a music that is passe? Don? I, I just don't think that it will ever be really passe because everything you hear has roots in the bebop period. Uh, what about the young guys? Are they well? You have a young son who plays well, wonderful sax. My young son studied uh, Parker, Charlie Parker. I asked him to uh, listen to several several records, or at least as many records as he could get from that era, especially Parker. And he took that from there and went to Coltrane, and mm -hmm. that's pretty much the way it went. Yeah, Danny, how about your kids? There are a couple of them are musicians. Yes, I have a son in Florida playing bass with a top 40 group, and a son that started playing drums when he was 14 mostly rock groups but uh, last week he surprised me he, he used to go to bed with all rock records uh, for the last two <laughs> years now he's asked me about the uh, dizzy and bird and, and miles records so now i hear him every night he's going to bed the same way i used to like with uh, listening to the pop records for, uh, danny i mean david i'm sorry david you play with a lot of pittsburgh's younger musicians yeah. what's their feeling well you know they're all you know schooled guys yeah who, you know had to learn out of college them. right out of uh you know schools. well like yourself then, i mean yeah. you're a very schooled baseball player. and they you know uh, heck you know i had it learned you know like you know and they were you know and they're playing it young yeah. guys so it's still very players. vital as far it is as they're concerned yeah roger yeah. what about young drummers are they still learning from the bebop drummers well, the essence of drumming actually ends up, uh, it comes from that space and yeah. time, you know, it just has to. And uh, even fusion uh, drumming is related to that, there's no doubt about it, you know. Bobby, you're, uh, you're doing an altogether different thing for a guy who started out so much in the bebop uh, piano player. Well, yeah, you're a solo piano solo player. Piano. More of a stylist now. Yeah, how is but that? But you can hear a little bird in all my songs. <laughs> Well, you know, they were talking about Earl Garner. He, he was very much a part of the Bob movement, oh, yeah. even though he played in a very uh, impressionistic way. Sure. And then, uh, of course, Dodo Marmoroso out of Pittsburgh well, was right in there. Th that's one man I think that uh, Pittsburghers are not as aware of as they should be. Danny, you, uh, you see Dodo occasionally, right? Yes, I, I see him occasionally. And, uh, and uh, he's doing well, but he's just he's staying home. His mother and father are both. And he doesn't play anymore. He plays ours at his house. Plays, it, Dodo is a, is a man who made some wonderful recordings with Charlie Parker yes. uh, back in the California And period. he's also from the same, like, uh, neck of the woods uh, with Earl and Amal Jamal and uh, Billy Eckstein and uh, yeah. all around, and Bobby Cardillo, and, uh, all around the same. We have produced our share. And, of course, Roy Eldridge, who you talked about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. What about saxophone players? Well, Stanley Turrentine and... Well, Sure. Uh, Tommy from, and Tommy, Tommy turned into both. He was my Pittsburgh idol, Tommy. Yeah. And when we were talking about drummers, Roger, uh, Kenny Clark has Pittsburgh roots, who's, who's usually considered the founder of bebop drumming. I don't know about... Uh, then there was, a, there was a fellow named Joe Harris, who's still around our town. Joe Art Harris. Uh, Art Blake. Art Blake. <laughs> yeah. I just saw Joe Harris's picture in the uh, Jazz Encyclopedia by Leonard Feather. 
<laughs> what, what are you guys caught cooking in the next couple of weeks? Danny, where are you going to be playing? What are you well, up to? Well, uh, uh, along with Bobby at the, with the Gateway thing when the school starts, and then uh, we're going to be at the Shadyside Jazz Festival on the 29th with uh, John Wilson. Dr. Wilson, by the way, is a professor of jazz up at Duquesne uh, uh, college and, and we're, we're going to be doing a thing with his band and with Bob Mincer, a, a huge band which is 16 okay. or 17 men. Don, what's cooking with well, you? I'll, I'll be along with Danny on all those plus uh, this Sunday we have a concert in Butler uh, at the community college. Okay. Uh, just a quartet. Roger, you got anything special you want to tell us about? Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, August 9th uh, August 9th, uh, the Rudiger, the, which is my uh, jazz ensemble, and plays a pretty straight-ahead style of music, uh, yeah. will be at uh, James Street on North Side for the Pittsburgh Jazz Society meeting. Yeah. D David, what do you got? Well, um, Roger and I, you know, we work a lot around really town. Yeah, and, you know, and we'll be at the Arts Festival with, you know, these guys again, yeah. and, you know, we'll be doing a lot of things with... Uh, Kirsten and... Kirsten and... Uh, Nick Brignola. Yeah, Nick Brignola. You can Nick hear Brignola. Brother Bobby up at Christopher's almost every night of the week. Yep, Wednesday through Saturday. Okay, <laughs> playing that pretty music. Playing that pretty music. I, you know where I'm going? I'm going to New York City, and I'm going to work on the Americana, a yacht that was once owned by Al Capone. Now, isn't that something? We're going to play some music for you, so let's get the horns up again, all right? I guess we don't need any talk. All right, brother, bring us in. This is another song by Charlie Parker, and it's called Confirmation. I think the confirmation had to do with saying yes to life and saying yes to the music, to Bebop. Here's Confirmation, the guys in the band. Thank you. 
Thanks, guys, for coming in. You know, we've had quite an evening of jazz. I'm going to be back in two weeks with profiles of two great black artists, photographer, sculptor, composer, and film director Gordon Parks, and internationally renowned soprano Jesse Norman. Just ahead is the news at 10, followed by the nightly business report. Joe Negri here. Have a good evening, and whether you love jazz, pop, rock, or the blues, be sure to get out this weekend and catch some Pittsburgh area artists in performance. Good night. <laughs>